I'm Dr. Sharma from the Diagnostic Clinic. Uh, I know a lot of these speakers here. Thank you very much for a very interesting morning. I like the fact that Dr. Culp can give me a T-shirt that makes me more attractive if I drink more wine. And I'm told that's healthy. So having become more attractive and contracted HIV because of my promiscuity, I can go to Dr. Stringer and protect myself, although with that tie, he probably needs some protection himself. I'm interested, please, Dr. Stringer, in this uh, storage of your white blood cells. It's been going on for about three or four decades, I understand. What's the difference in the preparation now that allows practitioners like myself to offer patients such a uh, storage opportunity as opposed to, say, 10 years ago when I knew that I could have stored blood cells but had no ability to do so? Okay. Um the difference is now that there's been some very good studies which have identified the complete immune cell repertoire so that we know that within a, in a full unit of blood there is in excess of a complete repertoire of T cells, for example, that, that would be required, uh, if you like, two. to proportion down as a sample to, to cryogenically preserve. Also, the, the technologies um, that, we, that have been developed uh, are a lot more elegant these days where the studies have, have shown that you can cryogenically preserve your lymphocyte populations and for your lymphocyte populations and they remain viable and are fully active. And we know that using the techniques that have been developed and now are, are MHRA approved that you can get at least 95% viability of those cells. Now that wasn't achievable previously and, and uh, the studies really hadn't been uh, done properly to demonstrate that. Uh, the second su side of this is um, it's not really been possible to op offer this opportunity in, in a scalable way because most um, cells that are taken for cryogenic pr preservation have to be taken in a clean room based system. And uh, what has recently come up with the, the immune system banking procedure is it's clean room free. It's done actually within a fully closed system so that you can scale it. You can actually do many thousands of people at any one time. And this is, this is a sort of approach, I mean, I, I, I'm, I should say that I'm a founder of the company that is the first immune system bank company to, to be, uh, become available. Um, so I'm obviously going to be biased, so please be, be clear of that. But I think um, from our studies, it, it's become very, very clear that um, the immune system does undergo immunosenescence. And when we go through disease processes, we lose specific subpopulations of that immune system. So if we have an ability to, uh, if you like, preserve a representative portion of our immune systems prior to onset of disease and prior to onset of immunosenescence, or at least as early on as is possible, then that material is going to be far more likely to give very good responses. Now currently, if we look at adoptive immunotherapy, for example, for, for tumor, if we look, say, for example, at melanoma, the responses that we see are pretty good. They're about 30 to 40 percent, but they're not 100 percent, and the question is asked why, and, and that is probably the reason why, is, is simply because the, the repertoire has disappeared due to the cytoreductive therapies and also the disease itself from those individuals. So we're going to have to keep, is, is quite good. Sorry. in order to ma maintain this, we're going to have to keep the questions short and the answers equally short. That's okay. It's all interesting stuff, but... Uh, Jean Monroe, thank you very much. Could, could I please ask Dr. Fisher a little bit more about his protective equipment that he was referring to? Thank you. Uh, well, basically, I wish it was my protective equipment, but the, uh, uh, the protective equipment was invented or discovered by Dr. Igor Smirnov, uh, who was a Russian scientist, actually had some involvement in, uh, in Chernobyl after the meltdown where they had three million cases of cancer and he was trying to develop a polymer that would change the structure of water and as a whoops side effect he found that this polymer would give off a random noise field and there are some gentlemen standing against the wall over there that may be able to help you with it because I'm not here on a commercial aspect we have a problem we have a crisis and there's not much we can do about it except for what these gentlemen can help you with. And I hope that answers your question. Uh, my name is Dr. Michael. I have a question for Dr. Otto. Uh, when doing the uh, 
the preparation of the uh, PRP. Uh, you, you write, remix the platelets. How do you remix the platelets? And secondly, the two vials that you do this in, is that commercially available to us from a, from a vendor as a kit, or how do we obtain them? Uh, thank you very much. Yes, once you have um, spun off or centrifuged the tube, um, if you use a plain tube, you can use a plain tube with an acceptable anticoagulant, and you spin it off, you will have red blood cells, buffy coat, and plasma. And if you are very, um, uh, very good at doing this and doing this every day in the lab, you can aspirate gently. Well, first of all, platelet poor plasma, the top one to two mil, and then you can aspirate uh, the buffy coat plus the rest of the plasma without contaminating it with red cells. Right, so that's the most basic way of doing it. Then there are other tubes available where you have a uh, gel separator inside the tube, and when you spun it off, the red cells are below the separator. You have the separator, and above the separator, you have your, some white cells plus the uh, platelets plus the plasma. So that's easier, because if you stir it a little bit, you can get some of the red cells uh, shooting up. Uh, th these are much cheaper than the Medtronic devices or some other companies that are very expensive devices, and you need to, uh, to have about t uh, 50 mil of blood to give you 5 mil. These other tubes will give you 8.5 mil of blood will give you 5 mil of plasma. So, uh, and once you have uh, removed the top one to two cc's, if you just shake the tube a little bit, or if you use the most basic one, you aspirate the plasma, the buffy coat, and you've enriched plasma. And then it's ready to use.